Hello poetry lovers and poetry curious. I am back to read more out of this book of Edgar Bauer's collected poems. And today I'm going to read to you, and this is again going to be from the book within a book here, his book for Louis Pasteur, which was published in 1990, and this is going to be from part three in that book, and it is titled For Devereux Slough. So I decided to look up the Devereux Slough just before getting on here, and it's apparently a wetland preserve um, somewhere near Santa Barbara. So I I didn't look it up in depth, but there was something regarding it um, on the that mentioned Santa Barbara, like the the, uni the University of California at Santa Barbara. So I assume it is somewhere around there. Now I don't recall if the poem really has much to do with that. Um, I see it has a Greek name that I probably will say incorrectly. And so, let me see if I can look that up. I'm really into, like, checking on my phone <laughs> for pronunciation. Could I maybe say this name correctly? Or the way um, somebody else is going to, and here it is. <laughs> Gives me practice even. All right. Well, for goodness sake, I couldn't even hear that. <laughs> Do I not have my sound turned up? Maybe I don't. Well, a great philosopher's name. A great philosopher's name. I don't know if I trust we this guy. We are looking at how to pronounce the name of this ancient Greek pre-Socratic philosopher, as well as how to say. <laughs> Well, that's, that's too easy. <laughs> too funny. Um, I uh, see, now this looks different. Heraclitus. Ah, see, <coughs> and I actually trust this pronunciation more than the other, because that other guy, I had seen a pronunciation guide from him, Heraclitus. 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 That sounds more Greek to me rather than a, a, a way that an English per person would say. So yeah, a little divergence here. I'm going to try this one too. See if we can get any kind of Heraclitus. Well, there's another Heraclitus. Heraclitus. No, I don't believe you. I'm going to go with the odd one out. I'm going to, well, we'll see. We'll see if it fits into any rhythm here. Yep. Life is full of rude awakenings about how to actually pronounce uh, Greek names, right? All right. The Devereux Slough. Uh, I have read that for Descartes, all things alive or not alive are solid void, except equations. So these ducks, green bill and head, are graphs on blanks of subjectivity. Their quacks, some numbers searching for an ear, itself emotion 
thin as light. And since all void is gravity, it obligates the, further, the furthest fleeing cluster to their flight. The light year is their anniversary. The measured knot, the measure variation, our cosmic Heraclitus never rests. So I'm going to stop here for a moment. I'm only a third of the way through the poem. And just say, because I've mentioned in the previous videos where I've read poems of his, that they either had a form or were suggesting a sonnet or something like that. Um, this does not. Um, I think he's making some interesting sounds and he's doing the interesting twists in reason and suggestion and allusion to science, not science, and probably philosophy that I know nothing about. And um, so it's highly suggestive, but it doesn't have uh, any kind of strict poetic form. The stanzas, they're, they're approximately the same length, they're not the same length. But onward we go. Behold this book between us on our knees, the idiosyncratic pictures, the descriptions of how from pools reflective of the skies and clouds in Manitoba, the memory of this slew like a pinpoint on a map is expert navigation by the stars. Of Chanticleer and, oh my goodness, what is this? Pertality? Pertality? Yep, there's one I don't know. Um, design symmetrically precise. Colors repeated as formally as their migrations course. Behavior for the muses. As before, you read to me of warmer, richer waters along my thoughts equator where they swim until the season to look for them again. Behind us is the school for children who in letters cannot find their way, who read the B before the A, listen to them laugh when the snowy egret from its perch in bushes by the shore suddenly rises, the fear and greed of the ducks, Children run crying on the sand to where the wave beats. In the pale winter day, the, the hills are pale, shades of more color than there is alphabet. By such excitements moved to say, I love you. I know from both our doubts how much the greater certitude shall require the more illusion. What a way to end. I know from both our doubts how much the greater certitude shall require the more illusion. All right, so I'm going to look at this little section here again of Chanticleer, and I'm going to see if there is a way to find this word, since I don't think this is a fam famous philosopher. P E R. Oh, and look, I'm not the only one who's looked up the pronunciation of this. Okay, that's like the only thing that is. Interesting. So normally, it gives me... like a YouTube video or something. Pertilote. And it's saying pertilote. Chanticleer and pertilote. So what I never know here, because this only gets um, two stars, is whether or not they're giving the English pronunciation of a word that is um, not English. Ah, 
Bertolotta, Chaucer. Oh, it must be Chaucer, as we would say. <laughs> Bertolotta. Well, there is more than one. Yes, I'm still looking. The hen. It's a hen in Chaucer's Nun's Priest's Tale. So either Pertolote or Pertolota. <laughs> also the wife of Chanticleer in the tale of Reynard the Fox. I clearly don't know my tales. So one of the things that I was thinking about here is, so I read that and I of course was stuck on that word. But then it says, design symmetrically precise, colors repeated, as formally as their migrations course. And so I was thinking about Chanticleer and Pertolota, or Pertolote, and was trying to figure out the precision. It could just mean the patterns of the, of the feathers. It could be something quite simple. Anyway, he likes to, to have lots of interesting polysyllabic words, which is fun. It kind of slows down the, the reading of it and requires a little bit more attention. But again, he's always weaving. He's weaving magic and I don't expect to get all of it. I just I just like it. I do like his poetry. All right so we are going to have at least one more um, probably two more dives into this book. See you then. Bye-bye.